Hello and welcome back. If you were here just a half an hour ago with me, you were watching um, the uh, my Mindset Monday training. I am just going to jump on my phone to make sure you guys can see me because I can't see anything. My screen is once again blacked out like it was when I tried um, to do my Mindset Monday. So I just want to make sure Again, if you're on now, will you write in the comments if you can hear me and see me? Because for some reason, StreamYard is not my friend today and my screen is blacked out. So let me know if you guys can hear me and see me so I know I'm not just talking to a blank screen. We are. Yay. OK, so hopefully you guys can hear me. See, we are here for day one. So, yes, we are here for day one of uh, let me grab my thank you. You guys can hear and see me. Good. Then I don't have to worry about it. So. This is the proven childcare enrollment formula. I normally, I like to call it the proven preschool enrollment formula, but I know um, that a lot of us are childcare programs and not just preschool. We do have preschool as well. So I'm so happy to be here with you guys today. I love bringing this information to you. It is my absolute pleasure to serve the ECE community. Um, so thank you for taking your time out of your busy day. Time to me is the most important commodity that there is, way more important than money. Uh, our money comes and it goes and it comes back again. But once time goes, it's gone forever. So the information I bring you, I try to make sure it is a valuable use of your time. Always very important to me not to waste your time. So thank you again for investing this time into me. For those of you who don't know or haven't seen me, my name is Evelyn Knight. I am the child care business coach, the host of the podcast by that name, and also the founder and CEO of Child Care Business Professionals. And I am also a child care center owner. So all the information I bring to you and the things I teach you are actually techniques I have used at my own center. So they go through my incubator and I make sure they work before I bring it to you. So today we're kicking off this series that I'm doing on uh, the proven child care enrollment formula. And what we're going to do every day this week, I'm going to bring you a different pillar that I've used and put into place to get my child care center to the point that I have a wait list of over 300 people at any given time. I haven't checked it lately. I don't know what numbers I'm at, but I know uh, my wait list is so big. Let me put it this way. I'm having another center built in my hometown because I know I'm already got it full. That's I was going to expand my building, but there's just way too many children on my wait list for that. I'm also helping um, another colleague of mine build a child care center within my city. Uh, so there's two going up, one that I'm I'm helping one of my competitors build. Uh, she's a wonderful owner. Della, I don't know if you're watching. I know you'll probably watch later, so I'll give you a shout out right now. Uh, but helping her because I know that two things on that. Collaboration is way more effective than competition. And my heart is here for the children. Bottom line, what is best for the children is what comes first which is why I choose to collaborate with wonderful people that I know are bringing what is best for the children rather than see them as competition. So I'm actually involved in building two centers in my community um, that I'm feeding just out of the wait list for my one center. So this week, we're going to be focusing on certain pillars. Those pillars are in the workbook. If you don't, I, I've created a workbook for you guys. The things I teach are coming directly from that workbook, okay? So everything that we're going over today is going to be in that workbook. So make sure you have your workbook. If you don't have it yet, a team member of mine is that all of my team is going to be watching this. Put in the comments that you need a workbook and one of my team members will get to you. You should have a concierge for this program for my members. Those are your advisors, your quality accountability team. Um, so whoever you work with can get you the workbook. If you are not one of my members, uh, let me know. I'm sorry. I just got a message here from um, StreamYard telling me that my LinkedIn stream isn't working. So that's okay. But 
let me uh, let my team know that you need a workbook. Um, if if you don't have a concierge, if you're not one of my members, my team is here to help you. Again, my heart and my passion is for the AC community. So during these workshops that I put out, I actually have my team there for your disposal. I want to make sure that you are getting the best out of this workshop. I don't want to waste your time. Your time is precious. So my team is there for anything you need. If you have questions, whatever you need, they there. Make sure you engage in conversation. Engaging in conversation will make this a much more productive use of your time. The other thing on that is, as somebody whose background is in psychology, I understand and I know that trainings are really not effective. Okay. Yes, I know I'm bringing you a training, but let me explain. Statistics show that when you take a training, only 15% of a training is actually remembered. Only 3% is ever even implemented. When you take that training and you make it more interactive and you turn it into a coaching experience instead of training, that 3% actually jumps to 85%. So since time is such a valuable commodity to me, I want to make sure I'm not wasting your time and I don't want to put things out into the world and waste my time for you just to go and implement 3% of what I teach. This is why I make my team available to you. If my team is available to you to really get you involved, to coach you through this five days that we'll be together, then I know that I'm helping that statistic go up and I'm not wasting my time bringing this for free to the ECE community. I don't want to waste my time as much as I don't want to waste yours. So that is why it is so important for you to get with your concierge and make sure you're engaging. They have DM'd, they've sent a direct message to every person who has registered for this event. Make sure that you're engaging. Don't waste your time and don't waste mine. Engage in this process. Otherwise, only 3% of what you're doing is actually going to, or only 3% of what you're doing this week with me is actually going to take any kind of traction. But if you engage, we can get that statistic way up, even if 50%, right? I would be so much happier with 50% than 3%. So make sure you're engaging with your concierge. The more you're involved, make sure you're doing the homework every day. Um, we will be posting homework daily. Make sure you're doing the workbook. I don't want this to be a time where a year from now you pull out the workbook and say, oh, that was a great training, but I never did anything with it. I want this to create change as of Monday in your centers. Okay. So engage as much as you can. Another fun thing we're doing this week that I haven't done before. I am going to be giving away my advertising kit for enrollment for anybody who participates and really gets involved throughout this week. Every day this week, I'm going to give you a different word. By the end of this week, if you can send that word every single day to your concierge, and then at the end of the week, tell them what is the phrase that we put together, you will, we will send you that kit for free. I will send you the PDF copy of my advertising kit, what we put together for advertising. We will give that to you as a gift for knowing that you participated every day, that you took the time and really got involved. You just have to message that to your concierge every day. So if you don't have a concierge, let us know. Say, hey, nobody from the child care business professionals team has reached out to me. I want to get involved in this. So today, um, our word of the day, I will start with that. Let me go back into my banners really quick. The word of the day is all. Today's word of the day is all. So make sure you message that to my team member who has been messaging you. If you don't have somebody, let us know. In the it just put it in the chat, whether you're on YouTube, wherever you are, just let us know that you don't have a concierge and we will make sure we get something to you, somebody to you. So again, that will actually be a free downloadable PDF version of my advertising kit, all the copy I use, which for those of you who don't know what copy is, it's the writing. 
the and and the um, ECE world, we really don't know what copy is, but it's the writing, like what I write, how I advertise. I'll, I'm going to talk to you guys about postcards, a bunch of different things. I'm just going to send to you guys what it says and what it looks like. All done for you. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, but I'm not giving that away for nothing. I want to know I'm not wasting my time. And I just want you guys to send the word of the day every single day. So word of the day today is all. Make sure you send that out. And at the end of the week, you will be able to give us um, an entire accounting of what the phrase is. So, and remember that workbook, you guys. I'm, what I'm doing today, I literally teach this right off the workbook. So it is that important. So today, day one, I want to talk about what makes your center unique, your superpower. Okay, and this is a very, very important foundational piece. Tomorrow on day two, I'm going to talk about your virtual or your online presence and why that is so important. On day three, I'm going to talk about your professional persona, what you're putting out into the world. On day four, which is probably the most important day, if you guys can't make it for any one of them, the one day you want to be here is on day four. They're all important, though. Let me tell you, if you don't have the right, it's like a, a puzzle, right? Or, a, or baking a cake. Without all the ingredients, nothing's really going to stick. So you do want all those ingredients. But day four is the most important. It's follow-up. Follow-up. And day five is going to be branding, which is somewhat of a bonus, but it is absolutely important and vital. If you want to take your center to the next level, if you want to retain your employees and your children. And let me also tell you guys, a lot of this is also going to be how you're going to attract employees. Recruiting and enrolling often come with the same problems. And a lot of times, if you don't have these things in place, a lot of times what ends up happening is you don't end up recruiting or employing. You, you're struggling to employ people. You're struggling to bring people in because a lot of these pillars that I'm teaching you today are not put in place, right? So that was what makes these pillars so vitally important. So today we're going to be talking about what makes your center unique. And I am going to just dive right in and let me make sure. And again, like I told you guys, I teach right off my workbook. So I thought I had my workbook open here, but I don't know where I put it. There we go. I'm just going to open it up so I can take a look at it while we, while I talk to you guys. So basically I want to, you guys to really look at your centers, right? And know what sets you apart. If you were a parent, why would you choose to come to your center? No, and a lot of this doesn't have to be as complicated as you might think. And I also want you guys to think of this from a parent's perspective, not somebody in ECE. We get so used to being in this field and we get so consumed by what is our industry standards that we forget what parents know and what we don't know right? So think of yourself going into, oh, I don't know, let's say you went into the world of PayPal and you were working with PayPal professionals and they start talking to you about um, how things work from their end and their perspective. There's a lot of language they would use that we would not understand. There's a lot of um, different processes we don't know, right? As somebody coming in blind, we don't know what people who work within these companies know. But we often forget that. It, no matter what, what industry you're in, we forget that we are engrossed in, the, in um, the jargon, right? Earlier, I used the phrase copy. Most of you in ECE have no idea what copy is or what that word is. My employees for child care business professional know what copy is. But my employees at Zoo and Around Preschool probably do not know what the word copy means, right? That is an example of jargon. That's an example of using a phrase that isn't actually something that's used on a day-to-day -day term. I want you to think of ECE in those terms. What is it that parents are not aware of, right? 
And what else? What So when you're thinking about what sets you apart, I do want you to think about what sets you apart of your competition, but I also want you to think about what sets you apart in a parent's mind. How can you help educate the parents to know why are you the best? Why do they want to enroll their children with you instead of taking them to grandma's house? Why is it beneficial? If you are a high quality centered, uh, quality centered child program, that is research-based quality, children are better off going to preschool with you, even if it's just for your half day programs, than they are at home with grandma most of the time, unless their grandma's Prana Richards, right? <laughs> For those of you who know Prada. So you need to ask yourself, why is that? What is it that makes this more beneficial, right? And you really need to understand and know that and really just list it out, okay? What is it? And, and think of industry standards. Parents don't know this stuff. You're all CPR certified. We're background checked, right? We have continuing education, um, if you're a star rated program, what kind of work goes into that? If you're NACI accredited, why is that so important? What does that look like? Right? So, you no, know, how long have you been in ECE? How long have you been working with early childhood education? All right. How long has your center collectively been working in early childhood education? Yeah, those catchphrases that are so good are like over a hundred years combined experience, right? Those do matter. Experience matters. Um, what is your philosophy and discipline and guidance? Helping parents understand what that means. A lot of people have a fear of putting their child in childcare, mainly because they're not educated on what childcare looks like. And they still have that old view of daycare. And there are daycares out there. I will be the first to tell you. I've, I, I have, in my career, I have taken over a few. My current center right now that I own, I took it over and it was a daycare when I bought it. Now it's a preschool, right? Um, so there are daycares out there. What is the difference? In my center, I do not allow my staff to call my program a daycare. We are a preschool. We work hard to be a preschool and the word daycare is out the door. We are a childcare program. We are a preschool, but we are not a daycare, right? Well, when a parent comes in and they say, oh, I need to enroll my child for a day in a daycare. One of the first things we say is we're not a daycare. However, we do provide childcare. And this is why we're not a daycare because we run. And then we go into an example of why parents don't understand that. They think that all the childcare programs are created equally, right? So know from a parent's perspective, what sets you apart? What makes you special, right? If you don't know that, then you're probably not doing a good job of selling your program. The other thing I want you to keep in mind is when you're selling your program, selling your program doesn't just happen my, um Monday through Friday, when you place an advertisement on a Facebook page, or if you put uh, your center's logo on um, a billboard, right? I do a lot of advertising. Uh, I We do sponsor Little League teams. I make sure that um, my banners are on the high school football field, and I'm going to qualify that in a second. But what's more important than that is throughout my day-to-day, -day, I also educate the my community right i'm making sure my community is educated on who we are and what we do so later in the week i'm going to talk about branding and how i want my brand everywhere in people's mind my son always asks me he, my my son is a senior in high school and he's always asking me like mom why do you always advertise at the high school that's just and he'll tell him like, that is just messed up, mom. Are you thinking that the kids are going to get pregnant? No, I'm not. It's the same reason I advertise in Lead Little League. I want my logo and to be so ingrained in a person's mind that five years from now, 10 years from now, when they're having children and they've never looked in the world of preschool before and they need childcare, my logo is the first thing that's going to pop into their mind.
my child care center, like, oh yeah, they're zooming around in town, right? So I make sure my logo is everywhere. And I start from a young age. Uh, did you know when you guys are watching things like Disney Channel and Nickelodeon that uh, they have a lot of those commercials that we always think that they're there because they know moms are watching in the background, right? That is not the reason those commercials are there. Those commercials are there because the advertisers are trying to ingrain their logo, their brand so deep into a person. It's in their brain since childhood. So as adults, they are literally planning 10, 15 years in advance. That is why they are not advertising to you moms or dads who are stay-at-home moms and dads. They are advertising to the children. So I want you to think about that, right? In the community, when you're thinking about enrollment, I know we think of today, but we need to really look at the big picture. You need to think of today, tomorrow, next year, five years from now, 10 years from now, and so on when you're building that advertising structure. But in order to do that, you need to know who you are in order to sell who you are, to teach your community who you are. And when I say community, I don't want you guys just to think in terms of city. I have clients that are in some pretty large cities like Chicago, right? Detroit. Um, I'm here in Dallas now. So that is too large to think of as a community. So think of your community as that area surrounding you, right? If a parent is within like 10 to 20 minutes of a drive of your, to your center, those are the people in that vicinity that you really want to think about. Did you know that only 20% of children that are qualified to be in early childhood programs are actually enrolled in an early childhood programs? This is the other reason why it's so important to be educating your community on who you are, what makes you different, how, who, what is early childhood education, right? Because 80% of parents are still too scared to put their children in a preschool program. They're still too scared of that stereotypical daycare that they're afraid to enroll in childcare. They're afraid of the programs because they don't know that there's a difference between a daycare and a child care center. They don't know there's a difference between a daycare and a preschool. They have that persona that's in the news of the daycare that lost a child that's two year old walked out the front door, right? Because there's always, if you Google it every week, we can find something negative in the news about a daycare who did something, right? And they assume we're all like that. So it is our job to educate our community on who we are and so that they know you are different. You are not like anything and our communities are blessed to have us, right? So hopefully um, that kind of struck a chord with you guys, but know those little details. What's um, your philosophy on discipline and guidance under helping them understand that their role as a parent is different than your role as a professional. And you understand that because parents are afraid of that. They're afraid that you're going to try and raise their child, right? So helping them understand that we know our place, that we are there to help and to facilitate what the parents are really doing, not to take over, right? Make sure you know what perks you have to offer, right? Make sure um, they know all those little details. You also need to know who your customer is so that you know that you're reaching them where they are. So know who you really want to attract. That way, when you're putting your messaging out into the world, your messaging is I'm so sorry, guys. I don't know if you lost me, if I lost you, but I was kicked out. So I'm not sure. 
if you guys can still see me and hear me, will you guys let me know in the chat if I lost you and came back? I don't know what happened. It literally just kicked me back. I'm back. Okay, so I was gone. I, <laughs> I don't know. I know that I thought I was having to restart the broadcast and there's still um, 37 people viewing. So I don't know what happened there. Sorry, you guys, so much. I'm working from a hotel. The internet has been wonderful until now. So I am sorry about that. Um, but getting back, I want you guys to really understand who is your customer base, right? I ask myself, what kind of car do they drive? What schools do their children go to? When, um, what do they do after school? Are these children going to Little League? Are they going to soccer? Maybe they're a ballet type of or theater type of presence, right? Where are, you know, are they driving Subarus or are they driving Teslas? Are they driving big uh, 2,500 trucks, right? Knowing your demographic is so important when creating your messaging. You have to know the details about these families. What age group are they? Really knowing who you're talking to is extremely important because the kind of language you use, the verbiage you're using, what, um, where you're advertising is all going to depend on who these people really are, right? If my target market is somebody who shops at Whole Foods, then I don't want to post a flyer at Walmart, right? Or I need to make sure that the verbiage I'm using is a little bit different than somebody who normally would just shop at Walmart. If I'm selling to somebody who shops at Nordstrom's or Dillard's or Neiman Marcus, I'm not going to speak the same as I would to somebody who shops at Walmart or um, Family Dollar. It's going to be different. And then you might have people like me who shop at both, right? I one week I might go to Walmart and Family Dollar and next week I might be at Dillard's. So knowing who your audience is, is really important. We have to know who we're speaking to. If you're speaking to somebody who is, um, you know, shops at, uh, I'm trying to think of some example, like Patagonia and um, drives, you know, just, I, I can't even think about it, but who's very, very, very involved in the outdoors, right? They might um, belong to some hiking clubs. You're going to want to make sure that your program is a pretty active program that like physical education, outdoors, classrooms, those things are important to you. If you're somebody, I know one of my clients has an outdoor classroom. Amazing. Wonderful. I love it. Uh, we have um, a half acre garden with pigs at my center. Uh, so it's a little bit different with that outdoor garden, that Patagonia client is probably an excellent client for her, right? Because somebody who is uh, really into like REI, Patagonia, they're probably outdoorsy people and an outdoor um, classroom is probably very appealing to them. For me, my clientele is a very rancher, farmer. We live in a rural area, so that is a lot of my target market. So I really have a big agricultural, uh, I, I have like my garden outside. We actually take things from seed to an entire salad kit so the pair, the children can see the entire progress of the agricultural cycle, right? We've even had chickens a one spring, a summer through spring, so the kids could see where their eggs come from, all of that. Farming is a big industry in my area, ranching, all of those kind of things, right? The agriculture is important in Northern Nevada. So we have things that speak to those people. Uh, yes, I have potbelly pigs. My children take care of them. They are the best pets. Uh, they're e way easier than the chickens, the bunnies, all the other ones we've had. But knowing your target market is very important. So we're potbelly pigs and having a school garden works very well for me and is very important, that may not be so good in other environments, right? If you're um, looking at people who are much more um, like a jungle concrete type of a person who might live in the big city, they love the city life, they love just being surrounded by everything, they live in a condo, 
They might not value the fact that I have pigs. They might like it because it exposed their children to something different, but it's not going to be something that they really, really value, right? So understanding and knowing who your parents are, where they're coming from, and what they value is important because we do tend to go towards those things. And that is what all these other people are marketing to. Knowing where they shop, knowing who they are, you have to know who you're speaking to. And that's my point is always really having that deep understanding of who are you speaking to? That's what our goal is, is knowing who we're really, really speaking to. Um, and then when you're, when you know these things, you're going to really have a good sense of what gaps you are filling in your world, right? There are certain gaps that we fill and really having an understanding of what are those gaps. Knowing your clientele, knowing your market will help you to get a very good feel for the gaps that you're filling. The gaps are things like uh, my client that has the outdoor classroom. She's the only one in her area. So a parent who really wants their child to be immersed in natural studies and know more about nature and the world is going to choose her program, right? Because she's filling that gap. Uh, my program really focusing on agriculture, knowing that we are intentionally teaching children where their food comes from, right? That is a gap I'm filling because a lot of the people in my community really want their children to know what they do for a living is important, right? So knowing that gap. Another area, though, that I fill the gap that's a little bit different from this completely is my hours of operation are 5.30 a.m., to 6 30 p.m. I uh, my center is located about 20 minutes away from the biggest industrial park in the world okay we have a lot of competition but we are also really close to that industrial park well most of you guys are probably thinking oh my gosh you open at 5 30 a.m most people don't want to do that right so there was a gap in the market because most centers want to open around 7 a.m and they are targeting probably people who get to work at 8 or 9 a.m. Well, for this industrial market, a lot of our parents have to be at work by 6 a.m. So we made sure to open early enough for those parents to drop off and get to work on time. That is a gap we fill. We fill the gap of those early morning hours. The other thing on that is these parents also work four 10-hour days. They don't work eight-hour shifts. So that's another gap we fill. By opening those long hours, we can fill the gap of those times when the parents don't have care, right? So we're filling that gap really early in the morning to care for those children. So look at what gaps do you feel, fill? What does your center offer that nobody else offers? If you don't, look for the gaps in your area. Maybe you need to change your hours of operation. Maybe you need to stay open later or open earlier. Look at all the employers around you and look at what are the needs of the families around you and adapt to those needs so that you're filling gaps. Figure out where is the gap in our industry? Why are parents using unlicensed providers instead of choosing someone who cares enough to take the time to become licensed, right? And those are the kind of things I also educate my parents on is look at this is everything we have to do to be licensed because we care enough about children to go through the hoops to do what's best for them. And someone who truly cares enough for the children are going to do what's best for them, which means they're going to be licensed. They're going to be insured. They're going to go through all the hoops because they know what's best for the children. They know it is what is best for the children. So keep that in mind too. Those are the kind of things that you can sell a parent on. Um, uh, but what gaps are in your environment? Is it the hours of operation? Is it the type of care that's provided? Maybe nobody is caring for infants. And yes, it's hard. But when you open the door for infants, you get their older siblings. There's a lot of different things, right? So if you really look around you for what is missing in my community, what are the needs of the parents? It will open a lot of opportunities. But before you do that, you have to know who your customers are. You have to do the research and really sit down and do your homework and ask yourself, what are those needs? So just to recap what we've just gone through today, 
knowing what makes your center unique is very important. What is your superpower? Where do you stand out? Right. That is very, very important. Um, knowing just understanding what the parent's perspective is, how limited their knowledge of ECE is and help educate them, help educate them on who you are and what we do. Right. Uh, knowing what extras you do add, making sure that you have a good understanding and that you're putting that out into the world, pointing out basic things that, that they may not know. And also really getting to know who your families are on a deep level and understanding their wants, their needs, and who they are. What kind of language do they speak? What are they reading? What social media platforms are they on? If you have a lot of professionals, they may not be on Facebook. They might be on LinkedIn. They might be on Instagram, right? So knowing who you're speaking to will help you get your advertising out. And also knowing what gaps are in your market that you can fill. What is that missing link? So I hope you guys gained some insight for today. This is just day one. And I know I gave you guys a lot to think about. There will be some homework coming up. So make sure you get that done. If you really want to get the most out of these sessions, you want to do the homework. You really want to engage. Again, um, I'm going to repeat. Normally, I'm not going to do this, but today I will because it is day one. Again, we do have a word of the day. If you turn in every word this week of the day, uh, you will be given my free uh, PDF on the advertising I use during this enrollment process. And I'll go through over the week. You'll understand a little bit more about why, what I mean about that since we give different pieces every day away. So again, word today is all. So you want to message your concierge with this word right now and let them know that you are here. If you don't have a concierge again, let my concierge know. Um, if you guys have any questions too, while I wrap up, just put it in the comments and I can answer before. If not, my team will be checking uh, and we will be doing a question and answer. I believe it's Monday, Christina, if I'm correct, I don't, um, but I'm in a hotel, you guys. So I'm a little discombobulated right now, but tomorrow I'll be home. I'm so excited to get home. So if um, you make sure that you, I'm sorry, I put myself off track. Make sure you join us tomorrow where we're going to be talking about how important your virtual presence is and why having an internet online presence is so important. And then every day this week, we will have something different. So make sure you guys uh, are joining me every single day this week and engaging with your concierge because my time is the most valuable thing I have. Your time is your most valuable commodity. And I want to make sure that you guys know and uh, understand. Let's see. I'm sorry, you guys. My team is messaging me. Um, messages are flying in. Okay. So I want, sorry, you guys. I wanted to make sure I'm not missing anything. Apparently my team is having a hard time with the comments here. So make sure that you guys um, are really participating so that I know I'm not wasting your time. Again, it's worth repeating. In normal trainings, only 3% is ever implemented. I don't want my time or your time to be wasted on a 3% uh, rate of return, right? I would like to see at least 50. So the more you engage, the more I know you're going to implement what we're putting out there. So be sure to engage in the homework with your concierge and make sure that you uh, just show up every single day. Have a great rest of your day.